Hello everybody, welcome to Wine World TV, the best wine show anywhere. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Before we get started, make sure you're smashing that like button and subscribing to the channel. Every like and subscription helps build the channel. Even better, spread the word to your friends about the best wine show anywhere. All right, also real quick before I start, this is being recorded on January 1st. Actually, it's, I guess technically January 2nd now because you know how I like to start recording after midnight. You might hear some fireworks in the background. Last night, it was like a war zone in the neighborhood. Um, there was some uh, fireworks earlier today, closer to around 11 o'clock, 11.30 tonight. I just heard a few little pops going on right before I started, so you might hear it. I'm not gonna worry about trying to um, edit them out. All right, so today's wine I've been wanting to review for a really long time. I've got another wine from Morocco. I'm hoping this wine is as good as my last one from a few weeks ago. First, I've utilized Google Translate to help with the Arabic and French pronunciations. I created my own phonetic spellings to help me do my best. I'll definitely stumble a bit, but I should, it should sound correct. I'll put the actual words in the lower third. So it's the 2016 Domaine des Aulibon Thalibon Sirocco. It is 100% Syrah, from the Zinata AOG. I'll spare the Moroccan wine history in this review because I did it on the last Moroccan wine, so I'll put a link to that wine review in the description. So, Aulabouan, Thalabouan, is the oldest continuously operating winery in Morocco. It was founded in the 1920s in the Zinata wine region. The exact year varies depending on which website you go to. It's about 50 kilometers northeast of Casablanca, in 1968, the Thalvon Company was created and took over the winery. It is a 500 hectare estate planted to different French varieties. They produce 6.5 million bottles per year. They also have a restaurant on site called Rayad des Vignes. No real website for the restaurant. It did open in 2006, however. It also apparently has five rooms to rent any swimming pool to. So who makes this wine? Alon Greo. He is a relative newcomer. Well, not really. He began making wine actually in 1985 after working as a marketing manager for a large agricultural equipment company. He was also friends with some pretty stellar winemakers. People such as Paul Javoulet, Jean-Louis Gripa, and Jacques Cesse of Domaine du Jacques in Burgundy. In 1988, he ended up buying the vineyards he was renting in the Croze Hermitage. He added vineyards in San Joseph and enough vines to make two barrels of Hermitage wine. He's made a name for himself as one of the top Rhone winemakers, so he's got a lot of pedigree. The story of this wine is that Grayo was bicycling in the Zinata region of Morocco and stumbled upon the vineyards. He felt that there was a lot of potential because the area is a dry coastal region. While it gets very hot during the day, the Atlantic Ocean provides cool nights, which helps retain acidity and builds complexity. The soils are similar to the vineyards he has in the Rhone. They are comprised of alluvial and limestone soils. They do hand harvesting and practice sustainable farming. Vines are over 50 years old. Jacques Poilon from the La Ferme Rouge Review is a collaborator. By the way, I realized well after posting my review of the La Ferme Rouge wine that whatever website I got the translation from had a major typo. They have it as the Red Far. <laughs> no, it's the Red Farm. Ferme in French means farm or farmhouse. I know this because I reviewed a wine called La Vielle Ferme years ago, and that translates into the old farmhouse. That's the title of the review. And that makes way more sense now since many of the houses near that winery are painted what? Red. As far as the other wines from the state, I don't know how many of them have Grail involved. I had to piece together information from several websites as the actual website for this wine is very sparse on details. So what are the stats of this wine? All right, so we have the 2016 Domaine des Aulabon Thalabon Sirocco. 
Uh, it's approximately, it, it was it was $27 uh, at a local wine shop. 100% Syrah, sustainable farming, 12.5% ABV, has 2.5 grams per liter of sugar. This is according to the Canadian wine shop, SAQ, rather than LCBO, because LCBO did not have this one listed. And also the 2015 vintage. So it's probably going to be pretty much the same. All right, let's get into the wine. So as you probably saw on the bottle shot, I've got some little uh, markings on the label. It's also on the back. That's just because the the wine cellar or fridge, or whatever you want to call it, that I have, um, which actually is really not functioning now, um, and not because it's a bad wine fridge, it's because, well, the Coravin, when you put the wines back in, if you do it too quickly, the, the cork hasn't had enough time to heal and you get little drips. So I'm pretty sure that some wine dripped into the, anyway. So uh, this wine has lived mostly on shelves that were not quite, having a quite enough space to avoid having uh, rubbing of the of the uh, label, and I've had this wine for, I think over a year now. This is one of those that's gonna take forever to pull out. All right, here we go. I'm going old school on the glassware because the next review, I need all six of my glasses, and I figured the best thing to do is just use a, a, an old, one of my older glasses, and then have six fresh glasses for the next review. Um, so yeah, this is like old school, like Libby bought at Walmart, which, hey, I'll, I'll, I think I'm gonna do a, a, a episode on glassware itself and its importance or lack thereof. So, uh, but yeah, let's just get into the wine. So uh, it's not highly aromatic, but we definitely have a good moderate aromatic, you know, aromatic intensity. It's definitely youthful. Um, this one is 16, right? Yeah, 16. So, I mean, it's got, well, technically four years of age. I know it's 2021 now, but it's the beginning. So really like four-ish years of age. I get some really nice ripe red fruit, mostly a raspberry, a little strawberry. I do get a touch of black pepper as I expect to get because it is Syrah and that's usually a uh, marker for Syrah. A little bit of a candied raspberry, like a hard coat, like the you know raspberry candy itself. It's pretty clean smelling. I don't really, I don't detect a ton of oak. Actually, I don't detect really any oak on it. And the stats did not list anything about oak aging. So there may be no oak, but when we get to the palate, we can do that. There does appear to be a bit of stemminess and stem inclusion is not uncommon with Syrah. Let's just get right into it. So right off the bat, I feel like this is like a newish world version of Cornas. The tannin is really, really upfront. It's not as massive as some Cornas wines I've had. I've only had a few, but that's one of the things that will take me to a Cornas in a blind tasting. With if I if I've identified in my head that we're talking Syrah, then if I need to, you know, go just instead of saying Northern Rhone, I want to call an Appalachian. If it's really heavily tannic, I'm calling Cornos because it seems like that one, that area has the most heavy tannins. But this is really juicy. Like the fruit is definitely still ripe. You've got the, you've got that raspberry that, and you have blackberry now. Um, the strawberry really isn't as prominent, but you have the, you have the blackberry, raspberry, touch of strawberry. Um, it's definitely ripe in nature. It's almost a tad bit raisinated. Like we're talking, we're pushing the limit of, you know, ripe to overripe. Um, however, 12.5 ABV. So I do feel like it, it feels like it's a little bit warmer than 12.5. And I'm just going to double check, you know, that, yeah, I mean, the bottle says 12.5. So I want to make sure that, you know, sometimes when I get the ABV, I'm getting it off of a text sheet. And sometimes the bottle and the text sheet actually are not the same. <laughs> But I mean, it's integrated, it's well integrated. It's not a high alcohol wine, but it tastes, it feels like it's like a little bit more alcohol than 12 and a half, which it could have upwards of 
14, honestly. It can be a 1.5. Either way, it could be as low as 10 or as high as 14. There's this, um, there's like an earth, it's earthy quality to it. It's like a little bit of um, rubber. There's a little bit of bramble that's um, kind of being out in the in the woods or being out kind of in a, you know, out in the country type of thing. The tannin is really, you got some really good structure. You know, now that I've had a couple more sips, and it could be just because it's the first wine of the day and I'm going with a red wine. The alcohol doesn't feel as high, though I still kind of feel it. It's like one of those things like it wasn't there and now it's back. I think it's a delicious wine. It doesn't, I'm not blown out of the water with it. I do really, really like it, but it's not like, it's not like I'm like going, wow, this is like the best wine ever, which, you know, actually most wines are not going to be that way. But I can tell you the vintage Gruet I opened up for, as my second wine for New Year's Eve did do that to me. Check my Instagram feed for that. I mean, it's only a couple of pictures. I get a touch of white pepper on this now um, to combine with the black pepper. There's a touch of like herbaceousness, like a little bit of oregano tarragon type of thing. It's starting to turn like that dried herb, um, dried green herb type of thing. Uh, whereas the fruit was a little more prominent at first. Now it's like kind of, I'm getting those secondary flavors of really herbaceousness and not as much of the fruit as being the, the, the main player. It's like, it's like the herbs like kick, kick the fruit out of the driver's seat of the bus and now they're driving the bus. Ooh, I just got like some green olive on it, which you should be getting some of an olive officer off, but it doesn't always present itself, especially with outside of Europe for me. I think that's just some wiki wart. I really get that kind of Spanish green olive thing going on. A touch of black olive. Yeah. It's, it's turned to be like, at first I'm like, oh, this is like a new world wine. And now it's like, no, this is kind of old world, which makes sense because of who makes it and how, um, how well known and well renowned he is for making uh, Northern Rhone wines or just wines in the Rhone. This is a good wine. I'm glad I got it. If you can find this wine, you totally should get it. Uh, and 27 bucks is not like inexpensive, but it's also not like, it's not a ton expensive. Can you hear the train in the background? I don't know. I'm really saying that more so when I'm editing to see if I can hear the train in the background. Occasionally I can. By the way, that train is about, I wanna say it's almost five miles away. But it's like a clear night, it's like perfect, perfect weather. Like it's really crisp. The sounds carries really well. Yeah, it's also like kind of like that. Um, man, the olive is really starting to come through. Almost like that pimento olive thing, it's like a stuffed green, like a stuffed green olive. Let's see, there's fireworks too. This is a wine that needed to open up. It needed that air. It needed me to kind of like stall for time to like really let it open up. This is a wine I think if you decanted it would really benefit from it. And a lot of wines will benefit from decanting, but I usually don't decant at all when I'm at home. I just open the bottle if I'm going to like just flat up drink the bottle and I just kind of let the glass be its decanter because I'll usually take a while to finish an entire glass of wine. But yeah. It's opening up a lot more. It's good wine. Definitely, you definitely should try it. Cool. All right. So um, that's actually going to do it for today's show. Uh, again, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and then tell all your friends. And until next time, we'll see you later.